Nicola, it is so lovely to speak to you here you in this real-life Bridgerton that we find ourselves in. It's absolutely beautiful. So I wanted to start by asking you, there's been such a build-up to this season. Mm -hmm. Fans are so invested in your character because we've gotten to know Penelope. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of, I guess, fear or nervousness in that in kind of making, when you have all these kind of fan wishes to fulfil with this season? Totally, and I think I'm really aware of the fans, as is Luke, actually. It's something that we've been aware of since season one because I very much feel like the Bridgeton world has been around for like 20 years yes. people are so invested in those books that I feel like you know I've stepped into it really really late so I want to hope and pray that I'm doing service to what they would like but I think I keep that in my heart but then once I get on set I really just try and focus on the scripts as they are that day and doing the best job and I think also the best fan service that I can actually do is just doing a really good job at what the scripts are, if that makes sense, yes. you know. But yeah, I hope I hope we've done them proud. Oh, you definitely have. I've watched oh. a few episodes and it's just beautiful. Thank you so much. That and, means uh, so much to me. Thank you. And um, speaking about your relationship on screen with Colin, yes. this season is so romantic and, and so spicy. And <laughs> I've heard a bit of a rumour that some furniture was broken during <laughs> filming. Can you confirm and also tell us what happened? It, <laughs> it definitely was. It's really funny. We had one scene which was extensive. It took two days to film. Um, it's a famous scene from the books. Um, we were, it, it's a closed set, so there's only about four other people in the room. Um, and there was a camera above us and we were mid action and um, the piece of furniture just collapsed between us and it's, it's, it snapped and I've got, I've wow. got a picture of it. But I'll share when the time comes. <laughs> share it afterwards. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm yeah, glad yeah. you made it through filming unscathed. And yeah, that didn't yeah, make yeah. it into there. <laughs> and I also wanted to ask about the evolution of Penelope because sure. we've seen her so much sort of struggle with being a wallflower and left yeah. on the shelf. And with this season, I loved how she kind of got that iconic romantic comedy makeover but still remained I herself know. and didn't have to change who she was. What was it like for you to tell that part of the story? It was gorgeous. And it's funny because when Jess Brownell spoke to Luke and I about the run of the season, that was one of the first things she said. You know, she gets this makeover where she'll look really different, but mm. she's not changed. Mm. Because, the, I mean, the lesson is that she has to learn to love herself and yeah. grow her inner confidence. So it kind of doesn't really matter what she looks like. She goes and immediately tries to decide she's going to know how to flirt with men, and she absolutely can't. And also to get to play that was joyful for me because I'm a real comedy girly, so I really loved all of the rom-com elements but I think what I love most about her transformation is how gradual it is mm. and how internal it is and it's all about her loving herself really yeah, yeah I really loved that yeah. I just thought for wallflowers everywhere this is the biggest right? kind of championing moment yeah. to see that story told on screen yeah. and kind of leading into those romantic comedy elements uh -huh. I know um, your showrunner and writers have said they really wanted to lean into that this season yeah. so I wanted to know do you have any favorite romantic comedies that you watch to prepare for something like this or do you have a mm -hmm. guilty pleasure romantic comedy that you turn on we need a bit of a pick-me-up? Well, it's funny, we were, we did some pick-up shoots in December for this season. So we had wrapped in May, uh, or not May, sorry, March. So it'd been quite a gap, but Luke and I had some little bits of scenes to add in and change and stuff. And I watched When Harry Met Sally oh, in the lead-up. Yeah, yeah, like anything like Nora Ephron, I just adore, I, like just, it just, and also it just, there was, there's something about that era of rom-com that was so unpolished in a certain way. Mm. And the friends to lovers side of that, mm. I was like, I do, it is my favourite trope. I'm not yeah. just saying that because I'm in part of it. But yeah, that was, that was a big one. And when you're preparing for this, do you and Luke, do you have a conversation? Do you like mm. call each other when you first get the scripts? What are those initial conversations like? Yeah, we thankfully talk all the time, which is really, really lovely. We, um, we get the scripts in sort of two a two at a time type thing because it's each two are a different director so we had an overview of the season but then we get sort of drip fed so we oh. get we get really anxious and excited and we were like what's going to happen do you think this and this and this so we're constantly talking about it we'll talk about scenes that we're like scared to shoot or okay this is going to be a dancer yes. you know and that was the best thing for me this season is to have like a partner there who was totally on the same page as me mm -hmm. such a lovely friend that I could be like I'm really nervous about this or I'm really tired today or I'm really you know it sounds like I whinged at them all the time. I hope I did it. <laughs> no, it just sounds like your work husband and wife, you know, you've yeah. got to vent to them. Yeah, well, lovely. thank you so much for your time today. It's a pleasure to meet you in this season. It's just brilliant. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much.